We're at Mobile World Congress 2019 in Barcelona. I'm joined by Eric Josephson, who is the Vice President and Head of Advanced Industries at Ericsson and probably the coolest job title I've heard all week. How are you, Eric? It's good, it's good. <laughs> uh, now, uh, you've got some amazing things to show us here. Uh, this is an amazing event. You've got some great gadgets. Uh, I'd love to get the gadgets and have a look at them and tell us what they are and what you've got on show this year. Yeah, so when you come here to Mobile Congress to Ericsson booth, you're going to see a lot of industrial focus this year. Excellent. Which makes me proud. Me too. I love For big moving advanced things. industries, it's like factories, warehouses and mines where Industry 4.0 is really taking off. So what yep. you're going to see here is that you can see connected mines, we have an Eprock digger. Mm -hmm. We have uh, 16 use cases that is more industry 4.0 related. What can 5G enable from a business right. point of view? Right. And then the big demo is uh, fully flexible production with an ABB robot standing on an AGV, so an wow. autonomous guided vehicle, so fully mobile, and uh, autonomous pick and place tower. So if you go out there, you're going to see it's quite cool. This is what, how the future of manufacturing will look like in five years from right, now. Right. Right now it's quite manual and now we're moving into more flexible production with automation. So that's Fantastic. what we're showcasing. I love it. It's awesome. Well, I did do a walk around earlier on to have a look at it and I was very curious about that. So I'm glad you clarified what it actually did. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure what I was picking and packing. Um, the thing that strikes me with what you're doing around uh, some of the industry 4.0 focus now with the industrial big things is that they depend on the 5G network capability. Mm -hmm. So high throughput, low latency, high volume, high speed. Um, also designed for different levels of service. So network slicing allows us to have everything from consumer through to this industrial space. Uh, IOTs through everything, connected data uh, collection from small and smart sensors to dumb sensors. Um, so where, where are the big interest points from consumers and people coming to have a look at? What are people asking you about and what are some of the hot questions that they're asking about? What's on the floor you've got to demo? Now, so the first thing is a little bit like, okay, so industries are seeing this as a hype. Yep. Yeah, 5G is going to solve everything. But the quest is actually to fix a fundamental problem that's happening in the industry right now. Where right. 80% or even 90% of all connection, when you say things are connected, is cabling. Right, right. And it costs around 200 euro per meter to do cabling in certain industries. Gosh. So the business case is quite fast if you can actually cut those cables and move over to wireless. Yeah, yeah. But when you do that move over to wireless, it is Wi-Fi, LoRa, Zigbee, Bluetooth, a lot of different technologies. Yeah, and they yeah. all serve different purposes. Now with 5G and actually already today with LTE, you can have both massive and critical communication right. with one network. And that is something that the industry is really, really interested about. I bet. And we've seen this work uh, with uh, the aviation industry, yeah. for example, right? When they stopped putting copper wire in, in the Boeing 717s yeah. in the early days and they went Wi-Fi with the screens, yeah. I think they took about 1.5 tons of copper out of the airplane just to fly around. You imagine the extra fuel they saved, right? Yeah. Um, it also seems to me that uh, you know, hospitals, for example, when people deploy systems in hospitals, they like to run their own network, their own devices, router switches, servers, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, fiber. You've got multiple systems stacked up to get a few things beeping in the hospital. Now you can deploy effectively, it seems to me, one secure standard network, open platforms that people can plug into and get, whether it's network slicing, secure connectivity, software-defined, WAN, LAN, whatever. So people can do things faster, they can do them cheaper and, and more secure and safer because you've got one open platform but still all the security, all the connectivity and more agile because you're not having to unplug things, no more RJ45s. Exactly, and now you can actually serve like this critical case where you want to get down to like one millisecond. Right now we're right. around 10. Yep. We can get it down to 10 with the LTE, we're around like 30 to 10 milliseconds. Right. But with L 5G we will get down to like one millisecond, which then for the first time we can really remove those cables. Wow. On the other side, you're getting battery life, like 10 uh, years of battery life and yeah. 100 times better coverage. It is quite interesting, both for massive and critical. But I thought I would bring you with it some stuff just to explain. Please do. It's quite been, hard, like, what is Ericsson it's really been, doing? Right? It's been sitting in the corner of my eye. I'm looking, going, show me, show me. So, yeah, okay. So, firstly, what have you got to show us? Yeah. So, on that demo, when you all go out there, is this autonomous guided vehicle and the robot. And we all say that they are being connected. But how does that connectivity work? Right. Industries just want to get the magic done, right? Yes, indeed. They want to have stable, secure, and simple communication. Yeah. That's actually what we can serve now. Perfect. So, this is an Ericsson antenna. Okay. It's called DOT. You put that on the ceiling. One of these covers what the other device would take, like five access points with Wi-Fi. Oh, wow. So, much higher density. Yeah, or, or yes, better, so coverage. better coverage. Yep. Less density of these, so at Less least. density of those, but yeah. <laughs> better network coverage and, and more reach. Exactly. And it also saves a lot of power compared to if you would right, another right. indoor system. 
So that is how an so air how heavy antenna is this? looks like. Okay. It's not that heavy. So you attach that somewhere side of the wall on a yeah, roof, somewhere on the, on with lots roof. of reach? Yeah. Yep. So a normal deployment maybe is like okay. eight of those. Gotcha. To cover like 10,000 square meter. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a pretty rugged little thing. You yeah. just plug an RJ45 and I guess it gets power over Ethernet and away she goes. Yes. Perfect. And then we put edge compute and everything on premise so the data right. stays on the factory floor. Gotcha. But the problem is then like, yes, I put this up, it's nice. But do I have the devices? Right. So that's why we're partnering up, for example, with HMS. Okay. There's something called a Bolt. You put that as an antenna on the device. And that's what you're going to also see on the robot right now. Gotcha. So many of those were originally cabled, but now when they start to move around, you know, to have yep. like industrial gateways. Yep. So that's where HMS is one example of those. We are signing up more and more partners in the industrial gateway ecosystem. Just wow. enable this. This is primarily gimmick, but you can feel it. So, <laughs> wow, okay. Yeah. Don't look into it, that. <laughs> it's, uh, no, that's okay. So, this goes on to the thing that's going to move around. Yeah. This is essentially a, a fixed position somewhere that's going to get broad coverage and range. As you said, it's uh, lower density of these devices, but higher reach and, and so right. forth coverage in the network. And you can effectively plug these onto anything that's going to move around. Yes. Connect in, very robust, safe, secure. Yeah. And uh, looks to me like it's going to dramatically reduce the cost to deploy as well. So, the lower time to get these things deployed and lower cost and probably lower maintenance as well. That's the plan, that's the plan. We're, we are on this journey, Yeah. and uh, we have the vision of going to connect like one sensor per every square meter in the future. Wow. So we're going to spray our factories with sensors, and with that, it's not going to be sustainable if you don't get the very reliable and stable communication. Indeed. Yeah, so yeah. we're on this journey together with the industry. It sounds very exciting. Well, thank you so much for making time to catch up with me, and thanks for bringing some fun toys. Yeah, it's always fun. I'm going to have to give it back to you, though, thank otherwise you so I'll much. take it back to Australia with me. <laughs> Congratulations on a fantastic event. I am definitely going to come spend some time on your space in the pavilion, bring my camera and get some video and some photos, so. and look forward to meeting the rest of your team. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time. Have a Cheers. good one. Bye-bye.